Two of the most popular questions we get is what type of health insurance do you purchase for your travels abroad? And what is your experience of getting medical care when you're outside the United States? These are both great questions. And the first one is of course a difficult one to answer. But today we're going to tell you our experience of shopping for global health insurance, let you know what decision we made and tell you about a few medical experiences we've had while traveling, including John's visit to the ER. We don't have all the answers, but we know what doesn't work for us. And hopefully our experience can help you decide what is right for yourself. So let's get going. We're John and Beth, and we are the Retirement Travelers. If you're just finding us, we are a married senior couple who are traveling the world in retirement. We're full-time travelers, and we've just arrived at our 91st country of Sri Lanka. If you're wondering where we are as we travel the world, we always keep our location updated on Instagram so you can follow us there. When we started traveling, there seemed to be a lack of information for senior travelers like us who wanted to make a big journey. So we decided to create a series of travel school lessons to help others learn from our experiences. We'll be posting all of these videos on our website, retirementtravelers.com. So go there to binge watch. It helps our algorithm. So let's start with telling you briefly about our medical care outside the US, starting with dental. First, we've had our teeth cleaned in many countries with varying degrees of quality, but for the most part, you know, when we get a chance to get cleanings every three months, we do it. You know, it's actually become an interesting experience for us. <laughs> you know, it is always cheap, usually about 20 to $40, and we know it's good for our health, so we go ahead and do it. We also have had medical testing done in Medellin, Colombia. Our experience there was good for the most part. We have a great dentist there and a very good ophthalmologist. We've gotten glasses made with top of the line lenses that saved us probably $1,000 a pair compared to the United States. We've had, I've had digital mammograms, you haven't, right? No, no. <laughs> that are, are exactly the same machines that they have in the United States. The clinic looked exactly the same, same robes, same experience. Uh, we've had blood tests and we've had routine checkups. The biggest complaint with visiting our general practice doctor in Colombia was the language barrier. You know, she did things just a little bit different. And since we do not speak Spanish well enough to communicate effectively, we had to hire an interpreter. Now we had mixed reviews with this process and we found that we left just not feeling completely satisfied with the experience. Since that time a year ago, we sought medical care in the US at Johns Hopkins. And we think because it's done in English, we are more confident that our concerns are being addressed to our satisfaction. For the most part, care in Columbia was good and we aren't bashing it. We just like to know that everything that is being said to us, we understand. <laughs> we also saw a dentist in the States because John needed to get a tooth implant. We know we could get it done a lot cheaper in Colombia, but it requires several visits and returning to Colombia every six months for three visits didn't work with our schedule. We are very confident of our dentist in Colombia, so that would have been a great solution if we could work it into the schedule, but it just didn't work. When we were in Greece, I developed an issue where I couldn't breathe well. You know, since I have a history with pulmonary embolisms, we decided to be proactive and go to the emergency room in Athens. You know, it was a good experience. You know, I was seen by the ER doctor who evaluated me, did an EKG and ran some blood tests. You know, he then brought in a cardiologist who examined me and did an echocardiogram. After a complete evaluation, they decided that I wasn't having a pulmonary embolism, which was very good, but actually having some asthma-like symptoms. From the waiting room, they called me to the desk and asked me to pay up front. They charged me $600 for the visit. I paid with their credit card. They then called me back up and asked me to pay an additional $150 for the cardiologist that John was seeing in the back. When he emerged from the visit, I returned to the desk and asked if I would be getting a bill for the anything else, and they said no. So for $750, I was seen by two doctors in the ER, and we were off to the pharmacy with a prescription for a couple of inhalers, which can actually be bought without a prescription around the world. Now we tell you this story to show you that our medical costs abroad are inexpensive when compared to care in the US. You know, we're no longer afraid to get care abroad. 
as we know the standards are very high like we're used to and the costs are just much more affordable than care in the u.s even our eye visits to an ophthalmologist who specializes in eye surgery is only forty dollars in columbia you know his office equipment is just as advanced as our ophthalmologist in florida same for the dentist one of the big advantages to traveling so much is that we have access to pharmacies abroad that allow us to get our prescriptions filled without a prescription. John's blood thinners cost us about $600 a month back home, but we can get them for $40 to $60 abroad. This has almost become a game for us. Now we pop into pharmacies all over the world to inquire about drugs that we take and we keep a running tally of how much we need and when we need to get to another country where we can fill our prescriptions again. You know, we were just in India and we took care of two prescriptions that we needed. We got an entire year's worth and before that time is up, we'll be back in another location where we can fill them again. You know, people ask us if we're okay with the brands that we get abroad, and we are. No problem so far, and we save thousands by working on our system. These experiences have influenced our insurance choices as we've shopped for medical insurance. So let's talk about medical insurance and let us tell you about our policy and what we have discovered when shopping for a new one that fits our needs as we travel abroad. We've learned that one of the biggest roadblocks for many people to retire early and travel full time is health insurance. So we wanted to go over our choices and tell you what we decided to do. Now we're from the US, so our experience will be different from people in other countries. So we're sorry that this is so one sided. When I retired from working for the same company for 34 years, I was 55 <laughs> years old. And since we were still 10 years away from Medicare, we had a big decision to make. I was offered a medical policy through my retirement plan with my employer, or I could go outside the system and get my own policy. There was one big disadvantage to going out. If we didn't like it, we could never go back to our Blue Cross plan and the benefits that we were accustomed to. So making a change was a really big decision. We like our plan. It is a PPO and we can choose any doctor we want anywhere in the world. We can get in-network care, or out of network care. We can be seen immediately without a wait and we have endless choices while in the United States. The problem with the policy is that it is very expensive at nearly $2,000 a month and has an $8,000 deductible. It's our biggest monthly expense. When we seek care outside of the country, we pay out of network and we must pay in cash to get reimbursed by the plan. One of our immediate thoughts was to price our plan in the healthcare marketplace put in effect by the Affordable Healthcare Act. Now these plans are similar to our current one, but if your income is at a certain level, you can qualify for a government subsidy, making them affordable or free for many people. Now we don't qualify, so we get no savings by going here. The only advantage we get from this law is that these plans can't deny us coverage based on our pre-existing conditions. I have a blood clotting disorder and Bev has MS. Now, we don't want to get into a debate about socialized medicine, but just know, in the United States, if you can afford to pay, you do. If you cannot, there is a system in place that pays for it or subsidizes a large portion of your cost. Now, once you reach 65, you're eligible for Medicare, which is a form of socialized medicine for seniors. We are 60 years old, so we have five more years to go before we get there. So, given that there are a few options for savings, our search continued for global medical insurance. Several plans we searched for in the U.S. didn't cover us when we were abroad, so finding one that covered us abroad was a big requirement. You know, we inquired about Geo Blue since we have Blue Cross now, and we seriously shopped for Cigna Global like many people use who travel a lot. We were hearing that other people were paying a few hundred dollars for a policy, and we thought this might be the answer for us. The biggest problem with these policies is that they require you to be outside the United States six months a year, even policies that have full U.S. coverage. So, for example, Cigna Global has two plans. One excludes the U.S. and one includes it. The one that includes the U.S. only allows you to be treated in the United States for six months and then you're cut off for the rest of the year. So let's say you have a catastrophic accident and you decide to return to the states to be treated. They will only pay for six months, even if your treatment lasts for an entire full year. 
The agent told us that they will pay for 12 months out of the country, but for only six months inside. For us, if we needed catastrophic care, we'd want to be near our children. I can't imagine the kids having to travel to see one of us in a hospital in a foreign country. It would create a huge strain on the entire family and put an unnecessary burden on one of us. So we just thought that was such a disaster waiting to happen. That's right. Not having full U.S. coverage is a big issue for us. You know, we see this as a huge gamble with our health and the whole purpose of having insurance is to protect our retirement nest egg. Now, I worked for 34 years at my job and we worked hard to save and live a debt-free life so we could enjoy our retirement. You know, this isn't the time for us to gamble with what we worked hard for in hopes that nothing would happen. You know, we're kind of past the days of being so carefree that we aren't prepared for the worst. The other problem with Sigma Global is that they're exempt from the Affordable Care Act and they are not required to accept all pre-existing conditions. They told us that they could write a policy for a year and would probably exclude all charges related to our pre-existing conditions. They went on to say that it would re be reviewed yearly and they might not cover them the following year either. So our thoughts are that Cigna Global is not the plan for us. We investigated another type of plan, which isn't exactly a full healthcare plan, but offers some coverage, but once again, those exclusions applied and they didn't offer care abroad. We want to add that if you are looking for a plan and can afford to be reimbursed for your out-of-pocket medical care, many Medicare Advantage plans will reimburse you for your expenses abroad. So keep that in mind and check with your plan. So what have we decided? Well, we have very few options. You know, if we were okay with treatment outside the U.S., which we are for minor things, Cigna Global is a good policy. You just have to accept that care is limited in the U.S. With Bev's MS, we don't want to risk that. You know, we would want access to the best drugs and therapies if she had an exacerbation. Another thing you could do if your insurance doesn't offer care abroad is to purchase a plan with Safety Wing or another policy for nomadic travel. Now, these are not traditional health insurance policies as we know it, but they will provide some benefit in case of an emergency. So it could be a good plan for someone who has insurance, but just wants extra protection when traveling abroad. There are limits to what they pay, so read carefully. They also offer some trip protection, and this plan is available if you are under age 70. Safety Wing also offers health insurance, and it is a lot like Cigna Global and Geo Blue. Now, if you have a suggestion for us, we would love to hear it. As you can tell, we've searched high and low, and there's just nothing that fits our needs available that's at a cost savings for us. Now, this is one of the reasons we've held off talking about insurance is that we just haven't found a great solution. If you know of an option, please leave it in the comments below. We would love to hear it. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like. We'd really appreciate it. If you're interested in learning about our strategy for saving money on business class tickets, Stay tuned. It's up next. We'll see you next week. Be sure to hit subscribe and follow along on our retirement journey around the world.